My name's Deborah Stratman, and I made a short called Optimism, which uh, shot about five or six years ago when um, my partner and I were commissioned to make some sculptures in Dawson City, which is the city the film is in, which is a town in the far north of Canada and is made famous because of the gold rush there in the 19th century. So it went from a population of you know very little to a huge boom town. And that continues to be sort of the main reason for the town being there. So there's a very long particular history of that town to mining wealth and extraction. And in fact, the entire landscape is completely changed because of that. So I had brought a Super 8 camera with me, just thinking, well, I'm going to be all the way up north. I might as well shoot a little. And um, I, didn't, I wasn't shooting with any particular film in mind. I just sort of was collecting portraiture, I guess. And then I set the material aside well, for like five or six years. And then just this summer, I revisited it and listened to the audio and realized there was a film there. So there it was. <laughs> so it's a portrait, basically, of the town, but maybe an idiosyncratic portrait. Geographically, that's somewhat north. You don't know how far north. You know it's in a valley. You know people smelt gold in their yard. So that's unusual, right? Um, so you have, s and then at the end, because Simon, when he's talking about the land rights and um, First Nation land rights and how not to give the land back to the government because they can turn a park into a mine very quickly. I mean, you're right, nothing's ever spelled out about the background there, but then again, depending on who you are, like Americans and Canadians would know Dawson City and would know that gold rush history, others less so. Maybe you don't know the gold rush history, but when you see oh, Charlie Chaplin's credited with music from the gold, gold rush at the end, I feel like I give clues more obliquely to help situate, but also ultimately the film's you know, it's not a message film about, you know, extraction is bad. It's, it's, it's much more of a poetic reminiscing on desire and um, what it means to want something from a place. And, um, and then I guess that's the way what the circle is for me. It's sort of like um, maybe a jewel, but maybe like this thing that's far away that you reach to. I mean, that's what desire is, right? It's just something that it's, it's not in your grasp. And so I feel like the gambling like hall and this, the gold, there's, you come back a number of times to that theme, even if you don't articulate it in your mind, it's a bit more abstract, so. But I like films that don't, that aren't overly, as a viewer, that don't lead me by the hand too much. And um, it's fine if someone watches the film and they, I mean, I had someone tell me they love the film because it's about nothing. And they kept saying that and they insisted, this film is amazing. I can't believe you made a film about nothing and it's so good. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's about nothing and it's still great. Yeah, I guess that's good. <laughs> Actually, the casino footage of the women dancing and stuff, that's contemporary. That's footage I shot, everything I shot. So they have reenactments of the old gold rush town and they wear these costumes. So it's, you know, it's contemporary, but again, about this desire, about a myth about the town and sort of wanting to keep that idea of, you know, what brought people there originally, I guess, which was quite intense. Like people had crazy lifestyles there. Um, I was gonna say something else, but I forgot what it was. I mean, to some degree, I have that with every film because it's always, a balance when you're structuring a film about how much do you give someone so that they keep wanting something more. So hopefully all films are about a desire a little bit because if you stop desiring then why well, keep watching the film or you're checking your phone or you're, you know, you start to feel uncomfortable and your back hurts. And, um, I mean, not that I haven't made films that put people in those positions that the desire isn't pulling you along, but um, yeah, that was more at the center of this one, maybe. Uh, I don't know, than others. And this, I was trying to work with a kind of, um, not premonition exactly, but there's a lot of slippage with the sound where you hear the sound before you see the image, or the sound can be two things. Like you hear the sound of curling with the landscapes and it's kind of wind, but then you realize, oh no, that's the sound of curling. Or 
you know, whatever the case may be, like, and that something could be very specific, but also abstract, like the, um, the kind of mandala tape shape that comes towards you. That's the, an electron shell for gold, like what the molecular pattern is. So that's fine if you don't know that. But there's something about a kind of oracular background or how we look to when there's something um, like gold or value, right, that connected to money, that's sort of opaque. Like, like what makes value? Hell if I know. It's so abstract. It's like augury. It's like how we know which things have worth and which don't to me is, is such um, kind of witchcraft in a way. And so I wanted a balance between these very concrete this stuff that comes out of the ground, and at the same time, these traditions of um, speculation, I guess, that are totally connected to desire. But it's fine with me if the details that I'm saying right now aren't your experience, and what you experience is more just surfaces, and the fact that like there's a repetition of circles, or that it's just you know guys making jokes about you know ping pong as a sport, or yeah, it's fine if you stay on that level. You know what's weird is we built that sculpture as part of a, a collective of sculptures we made called Augural Pear. Um, and I had not interviewed John and Eldo about that story. So it was after we built this big disc that they told me the story of the heliostat. So it was just a funny confluence, which there's no way you would know that as an audience member. You probably just assume, oh, that must be the heliostat. But in fact, it has nothing to do. It was just sort of an accident that we have this glowing disc. Is it, is it the Mayans who call, um, I think Mayans call gold the shit of the sun, which I really love. It doesn't really have anything to do with the disc, but I just thought of that. Maybe it's like an asshole for gold, for, for gold up there. <laughs> I had a, the Super 8 camera with me, and I took Super 8 because the digital cameras don't function when it's that cold. So um, I took an analog camera, and I wanted Super 8 because I wanted something small that I could hike with. Um, and it was great. Oh my god, I love. I mean, I was like, maybe I'll shoot more on Super 8. So when I was first shooting, I just turned the camera on when maybe it's connected to the desire thing, right? When I saw something that moved me, or. I wasn't shooting though with a particular concept in mind and um, I don't always work that way when I shoot but it's a nice break from the type of shooting that I do that's much more, you know, some films are very calculated and I'm going to get a very specific scene or, you know, something's very choreographed so this was much more impromptu and casual and um, I shot both in the winter when we were there researching and then when we came back to make the sculptures, so some of the stuff's in the summer when you see the cliff and the without snow on it. Um, and so yeah, it's a film that really came in the editing and came once I listened back to the audio and realized that between Simon Mason Woods, you know, explanations about you know, him as a smelter and um, con contractual relationships between First Nations peoples and the land and then the mayor and the ex, the ex mayor and the ex CAO kind of bantering at the beginning. I thought, okay, I have nice bookends, and um, I don't know. <laughs> it's like some films are made a bit more intuitively, and this was one of them. You know, I knew I had interesting ingredients there, but I didn't. You know, I let the form, I let the material tell me what the form was. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs>